A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to Hindu Newspaper Analysis brought to you by Shankar A's Academy for the date 12th of July 2022. And displayed here are the list of articles that we are going to discuss today. Without any delay, let's get into the article discussion. Now let us start our discussion with this text and context article. See this article talks about the dark matter, components of dark matter and the dark matter detector experiment called the Lux Zeppelin or Elicit experiment. In this context, let us discuss about the dark matter and the other important points mentioned in this article. But before that, the syllabus relevant to the article is highlighted here for your reference. Please go through it. Now let us start our discussion. First of all, what is a dark matter? See, dark matter is the mysterious matter that fills the universe but no one has ever seen it. See, this is because dark matter is completely invisible. It emits no light or energy. So, it cannot be detected by conventional sensors and detectors. See, everything we see, the planets, moons, massive galaxies, you and me, and these things make up less than 5% of this universe. But the remaining 95% consists of dark matter and dark energy. See, out of this 95%, 27% is dark matter and 68% is dark energy. See, while dark matter attracts and holds the galaxy together, dark energy repels and causes the expansion of our universe. So, the dark matter, it is attracting and holding the galaxies. Dark energy, it is repelling and causing the expansion. Now, let us see why these are called as dark matter. See, these particles are called as dark because they do not emit light. And they are called as matter because they possess mass like any other normal matter and they interact through gravity. See, as I already said, no one has ever seen the dark matter. But why do physicists believe strongly that dark matter exists? Well, this is because there is much evidence that supports the existence of dark matter. Now, let us see those evidences one by one. Coming to the first evidence, we know that the planets closer to the sun rotate much faster than the outer planets. When we apply the same logic to the galaxies, the parts near the center of the galaxy should rotate faster than the parts away from it, right? But the measurements have conclusively proved that the outer parts are moving as fast as the inner parts of the galaxies. That is, both the outer part and the inner parts are moving at nearly the same speed. The most logical explanation put forth for this observation is that the galaxies have huge amounts of dark matter. And this dark matter is providing the additional gravitational pull to ensure that the visible matter throughout the galaxy rotates at the same rate. So, this is first evidence. Now, coming to the second evidence, this is with respect to galaxy cluster. See, cluster is nothing but group. See, the galaxy clusters are the most massive bound objects in the universe. It comprises of hundreds to thousands of galaxies. Like I said, it is a group of galaxies. They have a massive velocity of gases. And the scientist opines that the reason for such high velocity is that it is surrounded with dark matter. Now, apart from this, know that bullet cluster is formed through merging of two galaxy cluster. See, galaxy cluster is already a group of hundreds to thousands of galaxies. When two galaxy clusters merge together, they form a bullet cluster. Now, regarding this, the physicist found that the merger of these galaxies could not be explained if we believe that only visible matter is existing in the universe. Therefore, there should be something invisible like dark matter which helps in the merger of galaxy clusters. So, this is one another evidence which proves the existence of dark matter. Now, coming to the next one, Einstein said that everything including light is influenced by gravity. Now, let us say that light from a distant galaxy is traveling to earth. What will happen here? It will bend and it will create multiple images of the background galaxy. This phenomenon is called as gravitational lensing by astronomers. Here, the dark matter in the galaxy cluster acts like a lens. So, the light from 
the far away galaxy is aided by this lens that is the dark matter before it reaches earth but if there was no dark matter there would have been no observable gravitational lensing so this also provides evidence for the presence of dark matter now that we have seen evidences that the dark matter exists we'll see what makes up this dark matter most dark matter is thought to be non baryonic so what is this non baryonic first we'll understand what is baryonic and the opposite of it is non baryonic see baryonic form of dark matter is composed of baryons it consists of subatomic particles like protons and neutrons and combinations of these so what is the opposite of this non baryonic non baryonic matter is any sort of matter that is not composed primarily of baryons now we can assume that dark matter is composed of non baryonic matter see many believe that the primary candidate for dark matter is a kind of elementary particle that has not been discovered yet see this non discovered elementary particle is widely known as weakly interacting massive particles shortly referred as wimp see there is no formal definition of wimp as i said earlier it is a new elementary particle which interacts via gravity but these wimps are still non detected in various experiments across the world since this wimps have not been discovered the next element called the axions have drawn worldwide attention see like wimp axion is also a hypothetical elementary particle and more details about this particle is yet to be revealed so in short we know nothing about dark matter and that is exactly why lux zeppelin experiment is being conducted by the us department of energy see it is a next generation dark matter experiment what is the aim of this experiment the aim of this experiment is to detect the dark matter particles know that axillary veto detectors are used in this experiment to reject the unwanted background events and the lux zeppelin collaboration consists of about 250 scientists in 35 institutions in the us uk portugal and korea we'll see more about this experiment in our subsequent discussions and with this we have come to the end of this particular article discussion with these learned points in mind let us move on to the next article discussion see this news article here it mentions about a comment made by an mp regarding the aryan dravidian divide He has noted that there is no evidence stating that the British created the Aryan Dravidian divide. See this comment was made opposing a statement by Tamil Nadu governor in which he noted that the Aryan Dravidian divide was created by British as a part of their divide and rule policy. And this is the essence of the article given here. In this context we are going to understand certain facts about the Aryan Dravidian divide. So what is this Aryan Dravidian divide they are talking about before knowing that let us see some facts about Aryans See Aryans follow the Aryan culture which is also called as the Vedic culture See Aryan culture began few centuries after the decline of Harappan civilization that is Indus Valley civilization It began in the northwestern part of Indian subcontinent and it gradually spread across the Ganga Yamuna plains It is said that there were significant differences between this culture that is the Aryan culture and the culture which preceded it. See Aryans they settled on the banks of rivers Indus and Saraswati. Know that river Saraswati is now non-existent. See Aryans composed many hymns that is poems in the honor of gods and goddesses they worshiped. They were compiled in four Vedas namely the Rigveda, Sama Veda, Yajur Veda Adarva Veda This is why this culture is also known as Vedic culture So these Vedas they were considered as sacred spiritual knowledge and in this culture which is the Aryan culture the society was divided into four varnas or divisions We have heard n number of times about these varnas and they include Brahmanas Kshatriyas Vaishyas and Shudras The so-called varnas earlier denoted the categories of people doing different kinds of functions or works. So going by this, the teachers were called as brahmanas, the ruling class was called as kshatriyas, the farmers, merchants and bankers were called as vaishyas and finally the artisans, craftsmen, laborers they were called as shudras. But things changed with the passage of time. 
and this division became hereditary and rigid see moving from one occupation to another became very difficult simultaneously the brahmanas also occupied a dominant position in the society and even called themselves as being superior to other varnas so this is about the aryas and the aryan culture so in the 19th century historians and anthropologists believed that aryan and dravidians were two different races and it was said that the terms aryans and dravidians signified the ancestry of north and south indians respectively but some genetic studies suggest that these are not two different races and because of such reasons now in the current period aryans and dravidians are thought of as two linguistic group of people instead of two different races so with this evidence now it is considered that aryans spoke the indo-aryan language which is the subset of indo-european language from which the other languages emerged later the languages that emerged later include sanskrit latin greek etc on the other hand dravidians are those who spoke the dravidian languages dravidian languages include tamil kannada malayalam telugu tulu etc see it has agreed that the dravidian language appears unrelated to the indo-european language families and most significantly it is unrelated to the indo-aryan language so it is not confirmed whether there are racial differences or not but linguistic difference is definitely there when it comes to aryans and dravidians see the origins of the dravidian people have been difficult to ascertain by historians to said that dravidians are non brahmins and their social life was casteless gender sensitized and egalitarian without any varna divide and they are now majorly concentrated in south india now with this information let us see how the aryan dravidian divide came into existence see it is because of the three crucial assumptions the first one is regarding the origins of aryans see some historians agree that originally the aryans seem to have lived somewhere in the steppes stretching from southern russia to central asia from here a group of them migrated to the northwest india and came to be called as indo aryans or just aryans so due to this they were called as outsiders who came to india some even mention this as the aryan or the indo aryan invasion theory this indo aryan invasion theory was first propounded by max muller but other scholars still argue that aryans were the indigenous people of india and they did not come from the outside so this is the first assumption based on which the aryan dravidian divide came into existence the second one is regarding the origins of dravidians see some argue that dravidians were present in indian subcontinent before the indo-aryan invasion so they are the indus valley civilization dravidians and the indigenous inhabitants of indian lands but the indo-aryan invasion destroyed the dravidian civilization and the dravidians were pushed to the southern part of indian subcontinent and this is one of the assumption now the third one is the involvement of british in the aryan dravidian tussle some suggest that the british attempted to create a distinction between the races it was done as a way of dividing and controlling the people of india under their divide and rule policy see it is said that british propagated the racist beliefs based on skin color like they did with the african origin people since the people who belong to the dravidian category had dark skin when compared to aryans dravidians were propagated to be inferior to aryans and this gave rise to the dravidian movement in india so it is believed that the british have created a north south divide in the country which is the aryan dravidian divide under this the southern indians were called as the dark skinned descendants of a destroyed indus valley civilization while the north indians were the lighter skinned descendants of vedic civilization now that's all about this aryan dravidian divide Now with these takeaway points let us move on to the next article discussion see this news article here it mentions that the godavari delta is affected by floods this is because water from two projects on godavari is being released into the sea the projects are polavaram irrigation project and sir arthur cotton barrage so the water from these projects are released into the sea which is causing the floods In addition to these facts let us know more about the Godavari river 
See the facts related to Godavari river are important for us when it comes to prelims examination. See, Godavari is one of the major river systems of the peninsula drainage system. You should know that the peninsula drainage system is older than the Himalayan one. Actually, Godavari is the largest peninsula river system. So, among the rivers in the peninsula India, Godavari is the largest one. It is 1465 km long with a catchment area spreading over 3.13 lakh square km. Now coming to the origin of the river, it rises from the slopes of Shahyadri, that is Western Ghats. It rises near Trimbakeshwar in the Nasik district of Maharashtra. It flows across the Deccan Plateau from the western to the eastern Ghats. And finally, it discharges into the Bay of Bengal. So it is one of the east flowing peninsula rivers. It originates in the western Ghats and it drains into the Bay of Bengal. And like any other eastward rivers, it also forms delta at its mouth. That is, it forms delta near the place where it enters the Bay of Bengal. See, after Rajmundri, the river splits into branches forming a large delta. You can see that in this image here. Now coming to the drainage basin, Godavari's drainage basin is the largest among the peninsula rivers. See, you should know what is a drainage basin. There's nothing but an area of land where water from precipitation, springs, ultimately end up in a common body of water. It may be a river, a channel or a common waterway outlet. See, drainage basins are sometimes called as watersheds or catchments. So, this entire area is called as drainage basin. The water from these area come into a common body of water and it finally drains into ocean. And this area is called as drainage basin or watersheds or catchment area. And know that it is the second largest basin after Ganges basin in the country. When it comes to peninsular India, Godavari drainage basin is the largest one. When the entire country is considered, it is the second largest basin after the Ganges basin. See, Godavari Basin covers parts of Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Odisha, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka. According to NCRT, 49% of the river lies in Maharashtra and 20% lies in Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. And overall, it accounts 9.5% of total geographical area of the country. See, due to these features, it is also known by the name Dakshin Ganga. See, Dakshin in Hindi means South. So, it is otherwise called as Southern Ganga. Now, let's move on to see about the tributaries of Godavari. See, the important tributaries of the river are Penganga, Indravati, Pranita, Purna, Varda, Vainganga, Manjra. And another important fact to be noted about Godavari is that it is one of the river systems which is affected by heavy floods. And especially the lower reaches of Godavari is subjected to heavy floods like we saw in the news article. Why is this happening? See, this is due to the regime of the river. See, regime is nothing but the variability of the discharge of water in the river over a year. See, Godavari has minimum discharge of water in the month of May and maximum discharge during July-August period. And after the August, there is a sharp fall in the water flow. And again in the month of October and November, the volume of flow will be higher than that of any of the months from January to May. So overall, the mean maximum discharge of Godavari is 3200 cusics and the minimum flow is only 50 cusics. See, Two reasons are responsible for this variation in the discharge of water. One of them is that the basin receives high rainfall in less duration causing floods. And the second reason is that it receives its maximum rainfall of about 84% during the southwest monsoon which sets in the mid-June and ends by mid-October. So these are the two reasons for the variability in the discharge of water and this variability in the discharge of water is called the regime of river. And now we are in the month of July so the river water discharge is more and it is causing floods. 
and that's all about this news article with these points in mind let us move on to the next article discussion see this news article here it has appeared today because of two reasons one because yesterday that is 11th of july was observed as world population day and two while observing the world population day the department of economic and social affairs of the united nations secretariat released the world population prospects 2022 report and in this connection we'll discuss important general and india specific points from this un report see this report it deals with three main areas one is about the world population trends from 1950 to 2020 and then it discusses about trends in fertility mortality and international migration and thirdly it deals with long range population projections up to 2100 now let us come to the important observations firstly it states that the world's population continues to grow but the pace of growth is slowing down See the world's population is projected to reach 8 billion or 800 crores on 15th November 2022. Though the pace is slowing down and the global population could reach 10.4 billion or 1040 crores in the year 2100. And the projection is given here in this table. See between the year 2022 and 2050 the expected increase in population is about 50 crores. And out of this more than half of the projected increase will be from the eight countries given here and India is one of them. Now secondly the report observed that the rates of population growth vary significantly across countries and regions. The report finds that 46 least developed countries are among the world's fastest growing countries. Out of these 46 LDCs Many are projected to double in population between the year 2022 and 2050. This will put additional pressure on resources and achieving the sustainable development goals. And apart from this, the report observed that the levels and patterns of fertility and mortality also vary widely around the world. This you can understand from this image where the variation from 2.3 to 4.6 births per woman is noted. Apart from the observations that we saw so far these are the other salient observations from the report we'll discuss about them in detail as and when the related articles appear in the newspaper for the time being you just go through these observations now let us come to the india specific observations see two points are important here one is india is projected to surpass china as the world's most populous country in the next year which is 2023 and the other is that about 35 lakh indians go out of india every year due to temporary work in other countries so in general the report calls for the countries to achieve the sustainable development goal target 10.7 which says that facilitate orderly safe and responsible migration and mobility of people including through implementation of planned and well managed migration policies So these are some important points from the World Population Prospects 2022 report and in this analysis we discussed about the important general and India specific points from this report. Now with these points let us move on to the next article discussion. Look at this news article here. It is about the recent Amarnath cave floods that happened last week in the Jammu and Kashmir. More than 15 people have died due to this extreme event. Now the secretary of ministry of earth sciences has told that these are flash floods and they did not happen due to a cloud burst rather the reason given is global warming which leads to sudden cloud formation causing flash floods it is also noted that such events cannot be predicted in advance with the current available technology and science and this is the essence of the article given here In this context we are going to learn more about flash floods so that it will be useful for you for prelims as well as mains. Now what are these flash floods? Simply it is the short and sudden local flood with great volume which is caused by heavy or excessive rainfall. Crucial factor here is that it is caused in a very short period of time. Particularly flooding that begins within 6 hours or often within 3 hours of heavy rainfall is called as flash flood. See extremely heavy rainfall from thunderstorms is the main cause. And apart from this, flash flooding is caused by slow moving thunderstorms, 
thunder storms repeatedly moving over the same area or the heavy rains from hurricanes tropical storms or cyclones and the cloud burst here remember it could happen due to other causes also like dam breaks or levee breaks mudslides or debris flow etc so far we have seen the definition of the flash floods and the causes that leads to flash floods now coming to the consequences of it see the severity and incidence of flash flood depends on certain crucial factors these factors determine just how quickly the flash flooding may occur and also it influences where it may occur see the intensity of rainfall and its duration are the main factors other factors include the location and distribution of rainfall the land use and the topography vegetation types and vegetation growth or density soil type soil water content etc so these are the factors that decide the severity of flash floods see here a fact to remember is that it is common in hilly and sloping lands where heavy rainfall and thunderstorms occur frequently but the urban areas also are prone to flash flooding see this is because the impervious surfaces in the urban areas do not allow the water to infiltrate into the ground and because of this factor the water runs off to low spots or low level areas very quickly and this causes flash floods in urban areas see the impact and damages of the flash flood is more devastating than any other normal floods this is because it can come with no warning at all and it can occur so quickly that people are caught without precautions and also flash floods combine the destructive power of a normal flood with incredible speed so it can easily trap and kill the traveling people or people who are at their homes or businesses see it is so strong that it can roll the boulders it can tear out trees it can destroy buildings and bridges also it just sweeps away everything in its path so that's all for the consequences of flash floods and with this we have come to the end of this article discussion with these points in mind now let us quickly recap all the articles that we discussed today in the first article discussion we saw about dark matter it is a mysterious matter that fills the universe but no one has ever seen it it is completely invisible and it makes up to 95% of the universe and it consists of dark matter and dark energy the dark matter attracts and holds the galaxies together but the dark energy it repels and causes the expansion of universe they are called as dark because they do not emit light and they are called as matter because they possess mass like any other matter and they interact through gravity and after that we saw some of the evidences that support the existence of dark matter one is the movement of the outer and inner part of galaxies in the uniform speed see logically speaking the parts near the center should rotate faster than the parts away from the galaxy so from this we can conclude that dark matter is providing the additional gravitational pull to ensure the visible matter throughout the galaxy rotates at the same rate the second evidence is with respect to galaxy clusters it is about the massive velocity of gases and about the merger of galaxy clusters see the merger of the galaxies is possible because of the dark matter and finally one more evidence for the existence of dark matter is the gravitational lensing when light from distant galaxy travels to earth it bends and creates multiple images of the background galaxy so here dark matter is acting like a lens and after these evidences we saw about the characteristics of dark matter it is made up of non baryonic materials see baryonic materials consist of subatomic particles like protons and neutrons so from this we can say that non baryonic matter is not composed of baryons the primary candidate for dark matter is kind of elementary particle that has not been discovered it is widely known as weakly interacting massive particles wimps it interacts via gravity and we also saw about another element axion which is also a hypothetical elementary particle and we ended that discussion by seeing luke's zeppelin experiment by the us department of energy it is used to detect the dark matter particles 
and the collaboration consists of 250 scientists from US, UK, Portugal and Korea. And after this we saw about the Aryan Dravidian divide. We saw about the Aryan culture which is also called as Vedic culture. It began after the decline of Harappan civilization. It began in the northwestern part of India and gradually spread across Ganga Yamuna plains. Aryans settled on the banks of rivers Indus and Saraswati. They composed hymns in the honor of gods and goddesses. They compiled it in four Vedas namely Rig Veda, Sama Veda, Yajur Veda, Atharva Veda since they are called as Vedic culture. The Aryan society was divided into four Varnas, Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, Sudras. The teachers were called as Brahmanas, ruling class called as Kshatriyas, farmers, merchants and bankers were called as Vaishyas, artisans, craftsmen, laborers were called as Shudras. And after that we saw Aryan and Dravidian were not two different races, they were two linguistic group of people. Aryan spoke Indo-Aryan language which is the subset of Indo-European language from which Sanskrit, Latin and Greek were emerged. Dravidian spoke Dravidian languages which include Tamil, Kannada, Malayalam, Telugu and Tulu. And after this we saw three assumptions which paved way for the Aryan-Dravidian divide. The first one is regarding the origins of Aryans who lived in steppes stretching from southern Russia to central Asia. They migrated to Northwest India and invaded the people living in India. This theory is called as Indo-Aryan Invasion Theory propounded by Max Muller. So from this it is concluded that Aryans were people who came outside of India. The second evidence is regarding the origins of Dravidians who were present in Indian subcontinent before the Indo-Aryan invasion. So they were the Indus Valley Civilization Dravidians, indigenous inhabitants of Indian lands. And the third evidence is based on the involvement of British in the Aryan Dravidian divide. It is believed that British attempted to create a distinction between the races under their divide and rule policy. So according to this, Dravidian category had dark skin compared to Aryans so that they were propagated as inferior to Aryans. And this created north-south divide in the country. Southern Indians were called as dark-skinned descendants of a destroyed Indus Valley civilization and North Indians were the lighter-skinned descendants of Vedic civilization. And with this information about the aryan Dravidian divide, we moved on to see about some facts regarding Godavari River. See, it is the largest peninsula river system, older than the Himalayan ones. We saw the origin, it rises from the slopes of Shahyadris that is the Western Ghats near the Trimbakeshwar in the Nasik district of Maharashtra. It flows from the west to east and discharges into Bay of Bengal. It forms deltas at its mouth after Rajamundri. And we saw about the drainage basin. Its drainage basin is the largest among the peninsula rivers and second largest after Ganges. It covers parts of Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Odisha, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka. It is also known as Dakshin Ganga meaning Southern Ganga. And we saw important tributaries which includes Penganga, Indravati, Pranita, Purna, Varda, Vainganga, Manshra. And finally we ended this discussion by seeing the floods occurring in the Godavari river system. We saw that it is due to the regime of the river. Regime is nothing but the variability of discharge of water. So this variation in the discharge of water is happening due to two reasons. One is the basin receives a high rainfall in less duration and the second one is it receives maximum rainfall during the southwest monsoon during the months of June to October. And with this information we moved on to see the World Population Prospects Report 2022 by the United Nations. This report deals with three areas. One is about the world population trend from 1950 to 2050 and the trends in fertility, mortality and international migration and it deals with long-range population projections up to the year 2100. We saw important observations under this report. The world's population continues to grow but the pace has slowed down. In the year of 2100, the global population could reach 
टेन पॉइंट फोर बिलियन और थाउजेंड फोर्टी क्रोस एंड आफ्टर दैट वी सो अबाउट द रेट्स ऑफ पॉपुलेशन ग्रोथ द रिपोर्ट फाइंड दैट फोर्टी सिक्स लीस्ट डेवलप कंट्रीज और अमंग द वर्ल्ड फास्ट ग्रोइंग कंट्रीज एंड इन दीज लीस्ट डेवलप्ड कंट्रीज मेनी आर प्रोजेक्टेड टू डबल इन पॉपुलेशन बिटवीन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू 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 थाउजेंड फिफ्टी and we saw the fertility mortality patterns which were varying widely around the world and finally we ended our discussion by seeing some of the india specific observations which includes india is projected to surpass china as the world's most populous country in the year 2023 and 35 lakhs indians go out of india every year due to temporary work and with those points we moved on to see about the flash floods see it is short sudden local flood with great volume caused by heavy or excessive rainfall it is caused in short period of time and we also saw the causes of the flash floods which includes extreme rainfall from slow moving thunderstorms thunderstorms repeatedly moving over the same area heavy rains from hurricanes tropical storms cyclones cloud burst and we also saw that it can be caused by dam breaks levee breaks mudslides and debris flow and we saw the factors which are responsible for the severity and incidence of flash floods which includes intensity and duration of rainfall location and distribution of rainfall land use and topography vegetation types vegetation growth and density soil type soil water content we also saw that flash floods are common in hilly and sloping areas it occurs in urban areas due to the impervious surfaces in the urban areas and we ended that discussion by seeing the impact of flash floods which is more devastating than any other flood it combines the destructive power of a flood with incredible speed it kills people it rolls boulders tear out trees destroy buildings and bridges so it causes damage to the infrastructure now with all these learned points let us move on to the next part of the discussion that is the practice prelims question discussion Today we have four prelims questions. I'll solve three of them, and one of them is a quiz question for you. Let us take this first question. Consider the following statements. Statement one: Aryan invasion theory was first propounded by Max Muller. See, this statement is correct. This we saw in the discussion itself. It was the German linguist Max Muller who, in the 19th century, proposed that 3,000, 4,000 years ago. an indo-european tribe that is the aryans invaded the indian subcontinent and pushed the indigenous dravidians to the south so statement 1 is correct statement 2 jyotirao phule opposed the view which suggested aryans invaded the indian subcontinent see this statement is incorrect because jyotirao phule suggested that aryans invaded the indian subcontinent directly See Jyotira Phule set out to attack the Brahmanas claim that they were superior to others since they were Aryans. Phule argued that the Aryans were foreigners who came outside the subcontinent and defeated the true children of the country those who had lived here before the coming of the Aryans. As the Aryans established their dominance they began looking at the defeated population as inferior low caste people. According to Phule the upper caste had no right to their land and power in reality the land belonged to the indigenous people the so called lower castes phule claimed that before aryan rule there existed a golden age when the warriors and the peasants tilled the land and rules so from this we can say that statement 2 is incorrect what has the question asked the question has asked to find the incorrect statements so here the correct answer is option b 2 only Now moving on to the second question with reference to river godavari consider the following statements its origin and maximum catchment area both lies in maharashtra this statement is correct it originates near trimbakeshwar in the nasik district of maharashtra and also the maximum catchment is in that state only about 49% of the river lies in maharashtra now the second statement its tributaries indravati and pranita receive more rainfall that causes floods in the basin see this statement is also correct central part of the basin receives less rainfall but indravati and pranita and sabari 
receive more rainfall that causes floods in the basin. Most of the years, the basin receives high rainfall in less duration, which causes floods. Now, coming to the third statement, its basin is bounded by Western Ghats in the west and Eastern Ghats in the east. See, this statement is also correct. Godavari Basin is bound by hills on all sides. The Western Ghats form a continuous watershed on the west. On the north, the basin is bounded by the Satmala Hills, Ajanta Range and the Mahadeyo Hills. The basin is bounded on the east by Eastern Ghats and the Bay of Bengal. On the south, it is bounded by Balagat and Mahadeyo Ranges stretching forth from the eastern flank of Western Ghats and the Anantgiri and other ranges of the hills. So, all three statements are correct here. So, the correct option here is option C, all the above. Now, coming to the third question, which of the following reports are released by UN Department of Social and Economic Affairs? Option A, World Economic Situations and Prospects Report. Option B, World Population Prospects Report. Option C, both A and B. Option D, neither A nor B. See, the correct option here is option C, both A and B. It is because the UN Department of Social and Economic Affairs releases both the Economic Situations and Prospect Report and Population Prospects Report. Now, coming to the final question. See, this is a quiz question for you. Read the question carefully. Try to attempt it and post your answer in the comment section. I have given a mains question for your practice. So, interested aspirants, write it and post it in the comment section. If you have any queries related to the articles that we discussed today, post that also in the comment section. And with this, we have come to the end. If you find the video useful, like, share and comment and do subscribe to Shankar IA's Academy's YouTube channel for further updates. Thank you.